Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which is I think the last in the, the series looking at the basics of British kit in the Far East in 1944-1945. That is British issue kit, obviously a lot of the kit is actually Indian made and there's some elements that in this video as well. What we're looking at here is boots and then anklets and putties. So fairly basic kit really and this is fairly generic in that regard. There will be more videos in this series going beyond the basics and I think the first one of those will be on machetes which will be coming out soon as well. So do keep an eye out for that as well. But what we're going to have a look at in this video is the footwear. So we'll have a look at that now. So here we have the boots on the left and then we have anklets and putties on the right which we're also going to talk about. The boots, it's going to be fairly generic really because these are essentially the standard issue boot for the British Army at the time. There was specialist footwear for certain troops as well but most people were issued these, most troops were issued these. And this is of course the British GS or ammo boot. It's a hobnailed leather boot, you can see that here with metal heel and toe plates leather sole, pebble grain leather uppers as you can see including the toe cap and you can see the pattern of the seams and so forth there. These are to be dubbined, they're not to be polished. At the start of the war originally you would have had two pairs of boots, one of which was polished, one of which was dubbined and the instructions and the outbreak of hostilities basically was that both boots would be dubbined so you wouldn't necessarily see shiny boots during the war except in exceptional circumstances. Generally speaking, both pairs would be dubbed. And there's actually a fantastic photograph of, a, I think, a Grenadier Guardsman uh, on duty at the palace, who is in full battle dress, gas cape, etc. The respirator have a sack on the chest, all very smart. The battle dress nicely pressed, but his boots are dull. Uh, there's no bullying gone on there at all. He is wearing dubbed boots, per those instructions. So, dubbed uh, ammunition boots are the standard that you would see at the time. These are an original pair, which I recommend looking out for. They would be the best option if you can find a pair in your size. I was lucky enough to find these 1990s dated pair and they've served me very well. I've had them, I've not had them resold. I've had uh, the heels and toes done and a uh, new set of studs in them uh, so far. And I've been reenacting for over 10 years now. So they will need resoling at some point, no doubt, but they've served me very well. In terms of reproductions, uh, Lennon's in the UK, make a very good reproduction of these but they are very expensive but again if you're looking for something to invest in a pair of decent boots if you're thinking reenacting is going to be a long-term hobby for you investing in a decent pair of boots is worthwhile another option is what price glory i think soldier fortune may also reproduce them as well but in both those instances they are cheaper and and you know the quality of manufacture is not quite as good should we say and in both cases i believe the toe cap is made of smooth leather rather than grained leather which is not correct so it's a compromise there you know, it, it, the cost is, is a lot less, but you're not getting something that's quite as accurate to reproduction and also something which is not going to last as long. The quality of manufacture is not quite the same. Another thing to mention here is avoid using DMS. The uppers are quite different to these in terms of the seams and so forth, much as they are an ankle boot. The toe cap is smooth on DMS and also you've, you've got the difference in the uppers, quite apart from the sole being a, obviously on the DMS being a directly molded rubber sole. That's not as visible when you're wearing them, but the, the uppers, the difference in the uppers certainly is and the fact you have the smooth toe cap. So I would recommend avoiding DMS boots. That's a general piece of advice, I guess, for, for British World War II reenacting in general. And another thing to avoid are the more modern hobnail parade boots, which are made from smooth leather and they're actually quite a different shape to ammo boots. They also have very thick leather soles, multiple soles, which again is incorrect for these. This is basically what you would see. And you see some ammo boots, in fact, that you might buy secondhand, which have been used by the guards, which have multiple leather soles added on and they would need to be resold to be accurate. So just a couple of little things to note there. If you can find originals, particularly if they're in this sort of condition, that is to say not they've not been bulled and burned down and had beeswax and everything applied to them, brilliant. Otherwise, Lennon's is the way to go, much as they are quite expensive. So that's my advice on boots. Fairly standard, really, in terms of what we're going to talk about next, which is the anklets. These are basically the standard uh, accessory to the boots, we could say. They're associated in people's minds with the 1937 pattern web equipment, but of course they aren't part of that equipment at all. They're simply known as anklets web, and they are a separate item and they are intended obviously to gather the trousers and then be worn over the top of the boots and they are just simply a short webbing anklet shaped at the bottom to go over the boots and they have some reinforcement there of course for where they will wear uh, over potentially wear points where they do sit over the top of the boots. These are an Indian made pair or well, this is an Indian made pair rather dated 1945 as you can see the other one is as well 
So if you can find an Indian made pair of these, all the better. But you can basically uh, wear any version of these you like towards the end of the war. Uh, that is to say, with leather straps, uh, straps with metal tabs on the end, straps without, as we have here. So early examples of these, certainly British manufacturer, I think Canadian as well, have a metal tip on the, the webbing straps that's then deleted. Uh, although you do see quite early dated examples without, so that they're quite a versatile item in that regard. Uh, they do uh, cover a lot of ground. You don't need Indian made ones necessarily, but it's a nice thing to have if you're putting together kit for a British soldier serving in the Far East. But you basically have the standard anklets web there, which are perfectly acceptable for use right the way through the end of the war in the Far East. Something you do see coming in, however, and become increasingly common as time goes on are ankle putties. Now these are short putties in contrast with those worn in the Great War and through to basically the start of the, the Second World War. They were worn in France uh, in 1939 and early in 1940 when service dress was still in use. You see ankle putties introduced in the Far East starting in later 1944. They start to show up in photographs quite commonly and then they're very common through 1945. Now those shown in photographs at the time differ a little bit from these. This is a pair of 1970s examples uh, or 1980s examples. These are basically those intended for use with DMS boots and combat uniform. If we unroll one of these, you can see here, if I double this over, you can get an idea of the length there in, in shot, hopefully. The tapes on these are made of worsted wool, uh, or you can see that wool tape. And these are basically the same colour very close in to, to the same colour as being as the material the putty's made from itself. Photographs of the time show that the putty tapes were slightly paler than this, so that's one small detail. I do tend to just use these uh, when I'm putting together a kit for the Far East. If I, I want to wear putties rather than anklets, I will use, uh, use these. Uh, but photographs do tend to show that the tapes used at the time were considerably paler as it were, than the actual material of the putty itself, which is nothing to stop you swapping out the, the, the tape on the putty or attaching a length that then wraps around the outside and gives that impression. Uh, it's not something I bothered with because you do see some variation in photographs. That's a very small detail, really, um, because you do see a variation in the colour in photographs anyway. Well, that's the putties. Uh, as I say, they are another option uh, rather than anklets and they're quite a distinctive feature of the uniform out in the Far East towards the end of the war. They did become increasingly common and they were presumably became a preferred uh, lower leg wear, I guess you could say, uh, linking the trousers to the boots uh, later in the war out there. So a nice feature to include with the uniform, a nice detail to include is the use of short putties. And that basically covers this, the, the footwear and the uh, anklets and putties there. So there we are. Hopefully that was useful and of interest. As I say, this is quite generic, really. Some of the information here carries across ammo boots, for example, are essentially standard issue across all theatres and anklets as well, at least to some degree. So, as I say, it's hopefully useful not only for its intended purpose, but more generally as well. If you have found this useful and interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.